official biography. He was born in a stable at Christmas. Uh, he was, uh, they tell us he was a boy genius who excelled academically and in sports. It also says he became a boring KPMG accountant until divine inspiration sentenced him to a lifelong servitude in the airline business. We are told, too, that he bears a remarkable resemblance to George Clooney's younger brother. <laughs> Would you welcome, please, the chief executive of Ryanair, Mr. Michael O'Leary, ladies and gentlemen. Let's fly with me, let's fly, let's fly away. Welcome, Michael. It's great to be here, Oren. Thank you. Yeah. New studio, new yeah, suit. New, new feel. Same about the guest. Same about guest. Yeah. <laughs> this is this is the, this is the new Michael. We've <laughs> been hearing so much about. Uh, do this do comparisons to the other famous person born in a stable at Christmas end there, or are there any other Messiah-like things you should no, tell us about? I think I think my mother was a virgin, and she thinks I'm Jesus Christ Almighty. <laughs> <laughs> that would be the Irish mammy, so. That's it. And you're no relation to George Clooney. That's uh, that's sadly no. That's sadly no. Okay. Let's talk about this uh, extraordinary uh, Ryanair makeover, Michael. Uh, whose decision was this? Who decided it's time to go cuddly? I think it's our passengers' decision. You know, we've been growing like gangbusters for the last 30 years. It's extraordinary. 2015 would be the 30th, Ryanair's 30th birthday. Yeah. In 1985, Ryanair flew 5,000 passengers. This year, we carry almost 100 million passengers. But this was the year when we didn't take any new aircraft deliveries. It was the year where we weren't going to grow that quickly. So it's always the year where we're going to try and fix the things that we may be disregarded over a number of years because we were so focused on growing quickly like and cutting costs. Like being a little bit more sensitive to what our customers were telling us, allocated seating, we want to bring a second small carry-on bag on board, your website is terrible, we fixed the website. Yeah. You need to be nice to the families traveling, it's difficult with children. So we've tried to address all that and listen to what our customers are telling us because we've got nearly 100 million of them. So, so what took you? I think what took me was probably a little bit of an obsession on my part for 29 years. We've got to be bigger, faster, lower cost than everybody else. We've got to be cheaper than everybody else. Yeah. The fares have got to be much, much lower. And I think probably over obsessing on things like that. But I think many businesses are like that. If you look at the way Lidl and Aldi have expanded all over Europe, it's yeah. been on the back of very low prices, very low prices. When you get into the market, then they soften the whole presentation and begin mm. to give customers what they want. And I think, if anything, we delayed a year or two. We should have been uh, a bit softer and a bit more responsive to what our customers wanted, yeah. maybe two or three years earlier. When you say softer and more responsive, do you mean nicer, uh, more polite? I don't think so. As a company, I mean, not, not as you as a person. I like to think we've always been reasonably polite as a company. Um, we've always been the airline that gives people what they really want, which is low fare. Yeah. I mean, remember, 99.9% .9 of people, when they want to make a booking, the first question is, what's the lowest price? But I don't think, looking back, I made a mistake in that we didn't need to be quite so severe about the weight of the bag, whether it was a centimeter bigger than the yeah. size or didn't really matter. And I think we've learned from that. <laughs> Customers have been telling us for some years, too, look, your website is terrible. Yeah. Fix it. We fixed it. We want allocated seating because the whole experience at the boarding gate is stressful. Fix it. We fixed it. And, you know, it's worked remarkably well for us in the last year. But we recognize it was only the first of maybe a two or three year program where we really are committed to listening to what our customers want us to do, while not sacrificing the same low fares, mm. but and respond to some. Now, some customer is going to call up and say, I want a refund of a non-refundable fare. Sorry, you know, I'm listening to you, but there are some things that are not changing. Yeah. But around the edges, if we can make life easier for business people who want to fly, like we're so big now, we have 20, we carry over 20 million business people a year. Yeah. Yet we never did anything for business people. So what are you going to do for Join the same people, queue, get in the same queue with everybody yeah. else. Yeah. Well, now, business passengers on our Business Plus that feature fast track to airport security, you get priority boarding, you get selected seats at the front of the aircraft, which yeah. means you can board last, get off first. The things that really matter to business people flying. not champagne flying. in the mornings and, and, and freshly squeezed We've arms never been a champagne time. in the morning no, type of airline. Time, no. no. Not your style. On time flight early what, in the morning. What about you? I heard you saying in, a, in an interview recently, you said that you're kind of a bit tired of being the panto villain because in many ways part of your caricature and arguably character was that you would go out and you'd dress up as a leprechaun, you'd act the maggot. Uh, you didn't seem to mind whatever you did to get the publicity, but you're very much a panto, if you like, villain. Why have you decided those days are behind you now? Well, firstly, I don't think you ever got tired of it because it generates, I mean, for many years when you're a low-cost company, and we were on the lowest cost area in Europe, yeah. it was always about not wasting. We didn't have lots of money for advertising, so you don't spend money on advertising. Mm -hmm. 
then if that's the case, you've got to generate lots of free publicity. And I've been particularly good at generating free publicity. I think the Irish generally as a nation are good at generating free publicity. We talk a lot. We talk a lot of rubbish. I'm very good at talking lots of rubbish. Yes. And particularly when you go across Europe, they swallow most of it hook, line, and sinker. And it works like a dream. <laughs> but after 29 or 28 or 29 years yeah. of talking rubbish, people in certain markets where we're no longer a kind of a startup company get fed up and irritated listening to the same old rubbish being, um, being put out there by me. And I think as we move from being 29 to 30, it's time for us to grow up a little bit as a company. Yeah. As I move into my 50s, it's time for me to settle down a little bit and cop on a little bit and be a bit more, uh, kind of instead of trying to be Robin Hood, be a little bit more of a serious, um, somewhat boring accountant, and but allow the company and the people Classic in the company to tell the story because we have a great story to tell. Okay, so you're kind of delegating a little more than you used to. I think so. I mean, we have a fantastic management team with brilliant people, nine and a half thousand professionals who, you know, an un uh, uh, delivered an incredible record over 30 years. And it's time to move the panto donkey backstage a little bit, which is me, yeah. and let the others, the professionals, kind of speak for Ryan. Have you got softer, do you think? Uh, I think yes. Uh, marriage yeah. for children tends to soften you a little bit. Yeah. I think a certain point in time in your life, too, I don't want to be running around and looking like a clown all the time either. Um, Would you be but, worried about what your kids might see and say at school? Would that be an issue for you? Not particularly. Uh, I don't think that's ever really worried me. Uh, their eldest is now nine, so they're well able to abuse me and do. And Mullingar under 10s would be out there again tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock. Will you I'll be there? Be I'll be there and I'll be abused by all of them. And, uh, and rightly so. I, I, I believe you're the assistant to the assistant uh, in management in the under 10s in Mullingar. Is that true? Water carrier, I think, water is, the, is, is the official chief. title. Okay. And, and we're not short of water in Mullingar. <laughs> Uh, there's a quote I'd like to b uh, bring you from yourself, said, I'm, a, I'm soft, cuddly, misunderstood, with huge concern for my fellow human beings. Is, is, this, the, is this the new you, or...? I think this is just the real, genuine me bubbling to the surface. <laughs> this, it's just been this crude uh, image for the last 30 years okay. that I'm tough and hard. I'm really very soft you, and very Do you sensitive. travel by plane a lot? Do you, do, you, do you enjoy travel? I don't particularly enjoy travel, but I mean, in my job, I'm flying usually once or twice a week. I yeah. was in Milan yesterday out and back. Uh, next week, I'm in Germany for two days next week, but this is the time of year when we're promoting lots of new routes. Uh, we're growing very rapidly yeah. in Germany, where Lufthansa and Air Berlin are struggling. If you were and to go transatlantic, do you have steerage or up the front? Uh, oh no, I, on transatlantic, I go up the front. Okay, so you know, no issue with that. that. That makes sense for you. Do you go on holidays? Uh, yes, very sensitive subject in my household. Why so? Because my children like to go on holidays, my wife likes to go on holidays, and I prefer to go to work. Well, how many holidays are you forced to go on here? Two. How long? Are you? How, how long are they lasting? A week skiing and then two weeks in sunshine in the summer. And on a scale of one to ten, how much pain are they for you? They actually, funnily enough, uh, when the children were under five at that stage, I would say it was probably about ten and a half incurable, incalculable pain. But now I have kind of, you know, the three eldest are five, seven, nine. They're at that fun stage now where, you know, they get the lads want to play football, yeah. they want to swim, they want so. I'm now emerging into my new role as entertainment's <laughs> officer, which uh, works very well. So why, why do you so not enjoy holidays then? Are you, are you, do you find it very hard to relax? Do you just want to just work like a workaholic? I'm not, no, I don't think that. People who are, I admit, don't understand the workaholic tag. Okay. I like working. I mean, I work, I'm very privileged to work for Ryanair. Ryanair's a phenomenal success story, one of the great Irish success stories of the last 30 years. Yeah. And I enjoy what I do. I'm rich enough that I don't have to go to work if so, I don't want. Like you, I don't have to go to work yes. if I don't want to. <laughs> so I go there because I enjoy it. And what we're doing is very revolutionary. I can't think of any other Irish company in the last 30 years that now leads the world, and Ryanair leads the world. with the world's largest international yeah. airline. I'm and still, I'm with still a plan to get to Dublin size in the next 10 years. I'm getting the impression from talking to you that Ryanair are doing okay. So let's talk a bit about the... the we need to improve oh, yeah. all <laughs> We, we need improve. to get better. But, but I just, I'm just curious to know, are you, an, are you a nightmare to be on holiday with? Because are you, are you always on the phone, on the email, I constantly thinking about work and just not relaxing at all? Do you ever relax? I, I, I relax. 
uh, I enjoy, I mean, I mean, I enjoy holidays. I used to love holidays with my wife when there was just the two of us. I'm less patient when I have to dra drag four children with all the kit and caboodle there. Yeah. You know, I'm like most men, you yeah. know, I'm very good at doing things, going things, organizing the logistics, but entertaining four children for two weeks is a fairly trying business. And it's also the only time in my life, you know, I go to work, generally speaking, where I ask people to do things and they tend to do it. I go home and I ask my children to do things and they just go, no. <laughs> I'm not uh, doing it. That's called reality. Uh, there we go. As it's well what, you know, as it's well what you keeps know. you grounded. The fact that, that uh, Ryanair is becoming one of the biggest Irish businesses globally, uh, I get the impression and, uh, that it's the Irishness is important to you. Do you, do you or, or am I right or wrong in that? Do you, does it matter to you that it's Irish or is it just business? I think, well, firstly, I think what matters about Ryanair is that it's a great Irish success story. Now, you know, to be fair, and the Ryan, without the Ryan family, it would never have survived the first couple of years, but it is one of the great Irish success stories. You go across Europe, in fact, most places in the world today, and they would be able to recognize very few Irish brands or names, but increasingly Ryanair, certainly in Europe, everybody's heard of Ryanair. Yeah. Um, I'm proud of the fact that it's Irish, it's managed in Ireland, it's run in Ireland, uh, and we have very... I, the thing I do regret is so many startup companies, and you know we want to encourage entrepreneurs in this company to start businesses, create jobs, but too many sell out too quickly, you know, and sell. I would rather we were able to encourage more people to stay here, work here, and build world leaders here in Ireland because it can be done. As you get older, do you have find you have a lot more time for the notion of unions? No, I don't think I have any time for the notion of unions. But we spend an awful lot of time within Ryanair dealing, negotiating directly with the pilots who their com representative committees with the cabin crew. So we thankfully have gone through, this would be our 30th year, we've never had a strike that stopped the airline. We had a, bag a couple of baggage handlers walked out about 15, 20 years ago. But we spent a lot of time negotiating directly with our people. They get better terms and conditions. They work harder than the unionized competitors will work. Um, but I, our people are one of the few people in the airline business in Europe that are not facing job cuts or pay cuts at the moment, where many other airlines do. And what other airline do you admire? Do you admire Lingus? I think uh, I, Aer Lingus, I, do I admire it? Not really. Why not? I, because I think they missed the golden opportunity. They should have been growing much more rapidly. Funny enough, you know, to, now that it's topical, you know, Willie Walsh, yeah. uh, a couple of years ago, really was turning Aer Lingus around very successfully and was making it, I think, into potentially a very formidable airline. And then, you know, the government wouldn't support him and they lost him. And I think it has kind of stumbled along for the last five or ten years in the absence of that kind of leadership. You said recently there, or a few minutes ago, that you don't need to work, but you're, you're still going to go in, and you signed a contract for, what, five more years? Five more years. Which takes you to 58, is that right? That's true. Uh, are you planning an exit strategy, or, or do you think that far ahead? Yeah, I've got this notion in my head of an exit strategy. My youngest at the moment is four. Yeah. He'll be going to boarding school in about 12, eight years' time, so eight years' time when they, it's just me and Anita again. Again, back in the house and no children might be a better time to yeah. focus on it. But other than that, no. And do you, we also, do, do, do we you like children, Michael? Uh, it's, it's, I, I adore. <laughs> no, I adore. You know, I know. I, I'm like everybody else, you know. I, what is it? What, somebody told me a famous line, you know, I, I, it, mm, I, children are like, what is it? I think the word is children are like farts. You can just about tolerate your own. <laughs> <laughs> it's a beautiful analogy. It has to be said. Uh, I'd be shot. For no, you're, yeah, <laughs> if are you, I'd just stay the night here <laughs> for a night or two. Uh, but, but yet you do, you know, you'll head to the under 10s tomorrow and all that yep. sort of thing. So, so clearly that, that fart and fart. Do you prefer uh, planes or horses? Uh, planes. Really? Yeah. I'm surprised to hear you say that. No, planes. But you've you got fit them up with fuel and they make money. Horses, you feed them all day, and they generally cost you money or you lose money with them. Okay. You at 58, uh, retired or semi-retired, I'd say would be quite a, a handful at home. So what will you do other than annoy the bejeepers out of anyone? Else in the I think, look, part of the whole Always Getting Better program in Ryanair that we launched last year is uh, we, you know, we've ordered nearly 400 new aircraft. Yeah. We are going to double in size from 80 million passengers to 150 million passengers in the next 10 years. That's a, an exciting enough plan to keep me occupied for the next 10 years. So mm. frankly, I have no idea, I have no plans to retire. We're actively engaged at the moment in trying to improve the business, carry more, make it easier for families to fly with us, make it easier for business people to fly with us. And that's 
my objective at yeah. the moment. I have no plans to retire, so don't worry about it. Did it take you to have a family, a young family of your own, to understand other people's pain flying with Ryanair? It certainly encourages you. Yes, I thought so. When we, uh, I, you know, n never before have I been, um, I, what, what's the word, scalped like I was by Ryanair when we took all four children with the bags uh, <laughs> to Portugal about four or five years ago. I go, my God, the, the actual baggage charges cost me more than the flights. Yeah. What, this what, has to change. What, 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 Time to lower the baggage welcome to the charges. Last 30 years of Ryanair for the Irish people. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, lesson learned and, uh, and, and job done. Uh, so as part of the new, the new Michael uh, O'Leary, the new and improved and svelte and, and, uh, and happy, smiling. Handsome was the bit you were missing, but go on. Child Nick, flatulent. Nicky Byrne is coming Nicky on Byrne's behind coming on now. You're all right. <laughs> uh, flatulent children comparing Michael O'Leary. Um, You've decided that uh, you want to tell people about this uh, this idea of a business class flight to mm. how many how many cities? Well, no, no, what we're doing with business class, we have a business service now. These guys want to know this one, I see. You, you can see, tell they're all business travellers. So yeah. we have, you know, what we've done this winter is we have double daily flights to places like Paris. Our flight, no, sorry, double daily flights to uh, Madrid, Barcelona, Milan, Rome, Brussels. So people can go out and back on the same day. We're the only airline that has morning and evening flights to all of these cities. Yeah. But, you know, it's but only for business people. Would, 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 would you guys be interested in a flight on Ryanair? <laughs> but but only, only if, it's, if it's business class. Uh, and it has to be return, Michael, so none of your cheeky deals on this one, right? So if, if I was to suggest to you that you were, if you're, if you're that cuddly, would you give everyone in this audience a business class return flight to one of those cities you mentioned, what would you say? Absolutely not. <laughs> I don't mind. I, I don't mind being warm. You're and... the panto winner again. You're the winner again. I wouldn't be warm and cuddly, not silly. <laughs> I'll go on. <laughs> okay. Before everybody goes mad, it's Madrid, Barcelona, Milan, Rome, or Brussels. Don't come back. Yeah. Don't ring up and say, I want to go to the Canaries or no, somewhere no, no, no. else. It's too complicated. So you, you have all won return flights, uh, business class with Brian, or to one of those destinations, everyone in the audience. But we're also, if, if you don't like where you go or the airport, we're going to put Michael's mobile phone number <laughs> on the ticket so that you can call him personally and get that sorted out. It'll be business plus time. I'll be up there taking the boarding pass. <laughs> hey, good you luck with the under this. 10s tomorrow, Michael. Good to see you. Thank you very Michael much. Michael O'Leary, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you, Michael. Good to see you again. That's all right. Thank you so much. Let's move on. Having sold millions of albums and concert tickets across the globe over the past decade, my next guest claims to be one of...